Sup, you beautiful bastards. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show. I'm very excited to kick off another week of ruining each and every one of your days by highlighting what's happening in the world. And uh, what a dark way to open the show, but that's that's very on brand for me. So hey, hit that like button, otherwise it will punch you in the throat. Support the show and let's just jump into it. Y'all, first up today, let's start off light. Let's talk about your body image, the body image of others, and social media. I lied, but also I didn't because some of this stuff today is heavy, but here we go. It's a body image and the conversation happening about it on social media has has recently gotten a lot of attention. This because in the last week, we've had a number of celebrities speaking on it. Uh, Actor Jonah Hill on Instagram Wednesday pleading with fans, saying, I know you mean well, but I kindly ask that you not comment on my body, good or bad. I want to politely let you know it's not helpful and doesn't feel good. Much respect. With his comments coming just a few months after he previously opened up about his childhood insecurity, saying that at that time they were exacerbated by years of public mockery about his body by press and interviewers. You've also got Rebel Wilson making headlines today like, Rebel Wilson opened up about the frustrating public obsession with her body rather than her career, saying in 2019, I had like four movies come out, two of which I produced, and one, Jojo Rabbit, which was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Picture. Yet I get more press the following year when I do nothing except lose weight. With Wilson, while yes, seemingly frustrated because she's the focus of it, kind of also understanding why the public feels this way, saying people are so obsessed with weight, but I get it. Oprah is one of my heroes. She certainly struggled with eating issues and I would always watch her episodes when she spoke about that. Also, personally, I will say as someone who as an adult and having my same frame has been 260 as well as 180, uh, I love what she said. I think what's been really interesting is how other people treat you. Sometimes being bigger, people didn't necessarily look twice at you. And adding now that I'm in good shape, people offer to carry my groceries to the car and hold doors open for you. Honestly, if you're looking for a reason to hate people, if you're a large person, lose some weight and and really see the difference in how people treat you. It's something. And then finally, and I think the person that's kind of gotten the most spotlight from this issue, I think is Adele. She's had a massive transformation, revealing in 2020 that she had lost a ton of weight, which sparked a ton of conversation, debate, and controversy. And in a recent interview in Vogue, we saw Adele claiming that this isn't actually new, saying my body's been objectified my entire career. It's not just now. But also adding regarding this new change, I understand why it's a shock. I understand why some women especially were hurt. Visually, I represented a lot of women, but I'm still the same person. And with that adding, the worst part of the whole thing was that the most brutal conversations were being had by other women about my body. I was very disappointed with that. That hurt my feelings. And hitting it home with, you don't need to be overweight to be body positive. You can be any shape or size. And I personally believe that that last note that Adele hit on is incredibly important. Right? When I say, no matter your weight, you are a human being deserving of love and decency, I think most everyone agrees with that. But also, unfortunately, many people treat that as a one-way street, right? It's usually in reference to people that are larger. And sometimes with some people that turns into like a glorification of living an unhealthy lifestyle, so much so that when then larger people who are like, hey, accept me for who I am, no matter what my body looks like, when they try and get healthy, they get massive waves of backlash, right? We've seen it with, yes, Rebel Wilson and Adele, but uh, another notable figure is probably Lizzo. Like if you wanna criticize Lizzo over something like uh, the video that recently came out where she's gushing over, hugging up on and telling famed woman abuser Chris Brown, you're my favorite person, we gotta get a picture. That makes sense, but her trying to live a healthy lifestyle, why? And yes, I understand that when we look to certain celebrities, we might relate to them, we might see ourselves in them, and so when there's a drastic change, maybe it's a little jarring, but we don't own that person. Or people see celebs' personal journeys as personal attacks on them. But yeah, for me, that's the story. Some of my morning thoughts is the first story of the day, and, and so I wanna pass the question off to you. What do you feel about any aspect of the story, whether it be a specific celebs or just the conversation in general? Also, in other news about the showcasing of bodies to the public, we should talk about what's happening with the restaurant chain Hooters right now. Or with the chain being no stranger to controversy in recent years, being hit with several lawsuits for things like weight, racial and gender discrimination, constantly getting backlash for its sexualization of women. And so when recently headlines came out that Hooters waitresses were getting new outfits, people were like, okay, what are they gonna do to change with the times? And uh, it's not what you maybe would be thinking. With numerous female employees showcasing the old shorts and then highlighting the new shorts, which I don't know if we can call those shorts. It kind of looks more like a thong that gets wide at the hips. Right, so there have been a number of employees basically saying they're underwear, I don't like this. Some even saying they've considered quitting because of the change. But also understand it's not just one thing. There are other employees saying they're fine with the change, saying that they actually made more money because of it. So what we've seen is after a number of these TikToks have gone viral, a spokesperson for Hooters said the decision was part of a collaboration with Hooters Girls in Texas, where they say the uniforms have received overwhelmingly favorable reviews from both Hooters Girls and customers. Also claiming that the uniform change 
exchange was rolled out to select locations in Texas before expanding to other stores owned by Hooters of America, LLC. But also after growing complaints, the company released a different statement saying that they appreciated the feedback and added, as we continue to listen and update the image of the Hooters girls, we are clarifying that they have the option to choose from traditional uniforms or the new ones. With one of the employees who went viral after speaking out, even saying the CEO of Hooters contacted her directly to tell her that workers could continue wearing the old shorts. And in her post about the news, she wrote, couldn't have done it without all of you. Then in, well, that makes no fucking sense. And let me explain why news, a private school in Florida is now requiring that all students who get vaccinated have to now stay at home and quarantine for 30 days. This because according to a local Miami outlet, the school, Sentinel Academy, wrote a letter to parents describing the vaccines as experimental and saying, if you're considering the vaccine for your student, we ask that you hold off until this summer when there will be time for the potential transmission or shedding onto others to decrease. And adding, because of the potential impact on other students in our school community, vaccinated students will need to stay at home for 30 days post-vaccination for each dose and booster they receive and may return to school after 30 days as long as the student is healthy and symptom-free. Now, to be clear, and it's incredibly unfortunate I'm having to say this about a place that is supposed to be educating children. What they're talking about here is based on anti-vax misinformation. It's bogus. It's been debunked right? this idea that the COVID vaccine can shed or release any other components. With agencies like the CDC noting that the so-called vaccine shedding can only occur when a vaccine contains a weakened version of the virus. And if a lot of these people that say they need to do more research actually did it, they would know none of the authorized COVID-19 vaccines in the United States contain the live virus that causes COVID-19. That means that a COVID-19 vaccine cannot make you sick with COVID-19. In fact, early research has suggested that vaccinated people are less likely to spread the virus than unvaccinated people. And beyond that, unvaccinated people are more likely to spread the virus in general because they're much more likely to get the virus than vaccinated people. In fact, according to recently published CDC data as of August, unvaxxed people were six times more likely to get COVID than vaccinated people and 11 times more likely to die from the virus. And just on a personal note, I think this is an incredibly important thing to remember, right? I think a lot of you understand this. You think, hey, this is common sense. But I mean, one of the most common things we've seen from people peddling vaccine misinformation to their massive audiences is, hey, if you get the vaccine, you can still get the virus, you can still spread it. Yeah, but it's about dampening the numbers, making it so the big numbers aren't so big anymore. They're smaller, right? Big numbers, bad, small numbers, good. But common sense doesn't appear to matter to the leaders of Sentner Academy. The co-founder David Sentner doubling down and repeating even more debunked bullshit in a statement to the Washington Post saying that the policy is a precautionary measure based on numerous anecdotal cases that have been in circulation. And adding the school is not opining as to whether unexplained phenomena have a basis in fact. However, we prefer to err on the side of caution when making decisions that impact the health of the school community. And if any of this seems like it's ringing a bell, it sounds somewhat familiar, it's because back in April, the school made headlines when its leadership told vaccinated school employees that they were not allowed to be in contact with any students until more information was known, and they encouraged their employees to wait until the summer to get the shot. And according to the New York Times, about a week after that, a math and science teacher allegedly told students not to hug their vaccinated parents for more than five seconds. Also reporting that the school's other co-founder, Layla Sentner, discouraged masking, but when state health officials showed up, teachers said that they were directed in a WhatsApp group to put masks on. But hey, that is where the story is right now. And of course, I'd love to know your thoughts on it. But from that, let's take a second to pay the bills and thank today's sponsor, the new and improved phil.ting.com. Putting your phone bill in half has never been easier with Ting Mobile's new smarter plan. I've talked about it before, but since switching to Ting's unlimited pro plan, I've saved around $42 a month compared to my previous provider. And it was easy and I have the same coverage as before. The only thing that changed was a lower monthly bill. You can get talk and text for only $10 a month, five gigabytes for $25, 12 gigabytes for 35, and even unlimited for $45. And Ting's flex plan is the pay for what you use pricing model, but even cheaper, just $5 per gigabyte. And like always, data usage is shared across all your devices. So the more phones that you have on one account, the less you pay per device. Whether you use two or 20 gigabytes a month, there is a perfect Ting plan for you and your family. So just head on over to phil.ting.com to check your current phone, create an account, and pick the plan that's right for you. Then Ting sends you a SIM card that you'll pop into your phone and activate in minutes. So see how much you could save over at phil.ting.com and to get $25 off your bill. Then in every day, it gets harder to have faith in humanity news, we go to Pennsylvania, where authorities say the passengers on a train near Philadelphia failed to intervene or even call 911 when they watched a woman being raped last week. And as far as the specifics here, a spokesman for the Southeastern Pennsylvania Transportation Authority said that the assault went on for around eight minutes with no one doing a thing until a transit employee boarded the train, called 911 with police arriving and arresting the man in the act. With court records now showing that the man has been charged with rape, sexual assault, and aggravated indecent assault without consent, among other crimes. With Timothy Bernhardt, the superintendent of the Upper Darby Township Police Department, confirming yesterday that several passengers were in the train car, though investigators were still trying to determine exactly how many were. With him going on to say that the video surveillance from the event made it absolutely clear that the passengers had the opportunity to stop the attack and didn't. Adding, I'm appalled by those who did nothing to help this woman 
moment. It's disturbing. I'm shocked. I have no words for it. I just can't imagine seeing what you were seeing through your own eyes and seeing what this woman was going through that no one would step in and help her. And if you thought this story could not get worse, it does. Because Bernhardt said that investigators had received reports that some of the passengers who refused to help or even just call 911 recorded the attack on their phones. And while this is still developing, police have not yet confirmed those reports. Bernhardt did know that the bystanders who failed to intervene could be criminally charged for filming the attack. But for now, that's where we are. We're gonna have to wait to see what happens. And I wanna pass the question off to you here. What are your thoughts regarding the bystanders here, whether it be morally or legally? I'd really love to hear from you. Then in, well, that's mildly horrifying news, we should talk about China. And that's because according to the Financial Times, it's now been learned that back in August, China launched a nuclear capable hypersonic missile. They're saying that it went around the earth in low orbit and then it nearly hit a target. And if you're like, Phil, that sounds concerning. Well, it is, but maybe not for the reason that you might think it is. Or because it's not the speed, hypersonic missiles fly at around five times the speed of sound. But that is actually slower than a ballistic missile. What makes this mildly horrifying is that unlike a ballistic missile, which is kind of locked in on its flight path, these can actually be maneuvered. And so there's this belief and concern that China could just bypass the US's current defense systems and pretty much nuke anybody. And according to the Financial Times, it appears that this caught US intelligence officials off guard, with one source reportedly telling them, we have no idea how they did this. Now. All of that said, for their part, China has denied this, with China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs saying that this was a spacecraft, not a missile, saying what separated from the spacecraft before returning was the supporting equipment of the spacecraft, which was burned and disintegrated in the process of falling into the atmosphere and landed on the high seas. Right, so that is what they're saying publicly. But as uh, the BBC noted, you have people like Michael Shoebridge, the Director of Defense, Strategy, and National Security at the Australian Strategic Policy Institute, saying if a hypersonic missile had been tested, it would fit a pattern of escalation in nuclear and other strike weapons. It's a pattern of increasing capability without transparency. Plus, it should be noted that China is not the only one trying to figure out hypersonic weapons. According to reports, yes, you have China, the US, Russia, at least five other countries. But yeah, I guess the main point of this story is do not worry. Whether it's true now or not, eventually we will be able to figure out a way to kill ourselves. If there's anything that human beings can do together, this is it. And then the final thing that we should talk about today are the supply chain and inflation issues that we're seeing in the US. I know it does not sound sexy, but it's very important. Right, if you've checked the news out over the past week, you've probably seen something touching on this, but what? Is it? How is it actually affecting everyday people? Well, to start right now, US companies are having a very hard time stocking their shelves with some products, right? It's not just PS5s. This is largely in part to several factors, all of which were induced by the pandemic. The first and most basic is that last year, you had a ton of consumer spending grinding to a halt with lockdowns alongside that. We saw production scaling back, but now with more and more people coming back outside, a lot of businesses haven't been able to ramp up production to meet this increased demand. And then in addition to production issues, you've also got transportation issues. For example, we've talked multiple times about how businesses are finding themselves unable to fill open positions. Currently, trucking is no different. In fact, the country is so stressed for drivers to haul freight that we're now seeing at least one high school in California launching a program to train seniors to drive big rigs. Meanwhile, Walmart, UPS, and FedEx have all now made 24-7 transportation commitments. But the supply chain issues don't just stop with ground transportation. I mean, one of the most headline-grabbing situations that we've seen so far involves problems at the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach and California. And for good reason, container ships are backed up. For reference here, pre-pandemic, it was pretty unusual for any cargo ship to be seen waiting off the coast to get into one of the two ports, which processed 40% of all shipping containers entering the US. However, now you reportedly have dozens of ships waiting weeks to get in. So this isn't a small issue. This is a major bottleneck since tons of ships need to pass through a single checkpoint. And then even once they unload, there's another major backlog involving shipping containers at the ports. And so because of that, we've seen Long Beach extending its operational hours. Also, this past Wednesday, we saw President Biden announcing that LA's port is now, quote, operating around the clock 24 seven as part of a 90 day sprint to clear a path for cargo. All of that then in turn has led to a lot of places having to hike up their prices. Well, I understand why some outlets for fear and or clicks have framed this around Christmas. Or headlines like Christmas at risk, a supply chain disaster only gets worse. To be clear, the consequences of this are so much more than that and they're already being felt. For example, we're seeing reports like some Colorado schools don't have enough milk for their students because of unprecedented supply shortages. With those schools urging students to bring refillable water bottles. Meanwhile, other schools are struggling to find meats like turkey and chicken, orange juice, meal trays, plastic spoons, and forks, right? Th this runs the gamut. The issues also extend to the housing market, right? Both labor and supply issues have led to an operational backlog for renovations and closings. With that, yesterday you had Zillow announcing that it would stop buying up homes at least through December. With that leading to panic and investors pulling out of the company this morning, the stock plunging 11% as of recording. And understand, this isn't gonna be something that's figured out like next week or the end of the month. Analysts expect these bottlenecks to continue well past December. Some economists calling the factors leading to the situation a perfect storm. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg judge also echoing that on CNN yesterday. So yeah, main thing, this is the current reality. I'm trying to arm you with the knowledge that it's happening. But also, if you are one of the people that primarily you're just concerned about the Christmas aspect, get what you need 
now sooner rather than later and if you need more money to get that thing or pay for better shipping hey why don't you just head on over to or just click that link down below to coinbase to franco.com you sign up just for signing up for free you get ten dollars in bitcoin then pro tip a lot of people overlook it but they have a reward system over there where you just spend a few minutes learning about crypto and you can get about 32 dollars more in crypto it is a great service i use them i love them but also it's the defranco hookup where you're getting about 120 mcnuggets worth of crypto but with that pat on back masterful integration of a sponsor done that's actually where the end of today's show is and hey whether it be the last story the first one and anything in between, I'd love to know your thoughts in those comments down below. And as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces and I'll see you tomorrow.